Oh damn, my fly's undone. What's going on guys? Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com bringing you my review plus on feet video of the brand new Under Armour Spotlight 2.0 arguably the most controversial boot release of 2017, at least so far. And the reason for that is by the incorporation of the zipper. Is this a good idea? I would argue no. Zippers are for pants, zippers are for jackets, zippers are for things that are supposed to have zippers. Are soccer cleats slash football boots in need of more zippers? I would personally argue no, but I'm going to tell you all about this one as well as the shoes themselves in today's video. So if you're interested in learning more, please stick around. If you're interested in a pair of Spotlight 2.0s for yourself, you can click the first link down below in the description or the little pop-up on screen. That'll take you to the review page on my website where you'll find Buy It Now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes where you'll be able to pick these up below their normal $220 retail price. Let's start off by focusing on the zipper because it really is the only reason why I think people are interested in this shoe. Although I don't think they're interested for the right reasons, which we'll talk about in just a second. So the zipper, as you guys can see, is not down the middle. It's slightly off centered towards the lateral side. A big misconception with the zipper, which is completely closed by the way, is that it's actually the lacing system or fastening system for your foot. That is not the case. Essentially all this zipper does is it attaches two sides of what is essentially a large lace cover for your foot. If you can imagine what Adidas does with the X16 Plus Pure Chaos and the X17 Plus Pure Speed, the current model, that's basically what's going on here where you have a big lace cover across the entire lacing system, which is underneath. But instead of just making that one piece of material, they made it into a zipper. So because of that, you do have easier access to the lacing versus what you would have on something like a Pure Speed where you can basically only pull from the top. But you, as a result, have a zipper on your shoes, which I would say is more of a negative rather than a positive. So you can see here towards the top, this little piece basically just covers up the top of the zipper, which you can see right there. And it's basically a standard zipper for the most part. It's got this little piece that kind of flips up. So that's on a hinge. You can maybe see if it focuses that it has a little Under Armour logo there on the end. Probably difficult, not gonna focus. But anyways, you pull that up and basically you can unzip the shoes just like that. Very, very straightforward. I almost dropped them but that is what's going on. So you can see that the lacing system is underneath. There's more to it than just the lacing system. I'll talk about more of that in just a second, but it's two sides of the zipper. And I will say this, the zipper does feel quite high quality. Um, it, it's got a nice solid sensation to it, but I do have my concerns in regards to just general stress on the zipper long term. Maybe it'll be good for a month or two, but is this something that's not going to break after a year? I'm really, really skeptical of that, even as solid as it does feel right now. Obviously, if you have a wider foot and you were to squeeze your foot into there, the zipper is not going to seal up as easily. There's gonna be stress on both sides when you're actually zipping it, which you'll see a little bit more during the on-feet portion of the video. But it's definitely a very, very interesting design choice that really, aside from just making a lace cover seal on both sides, it has no other performance benefit to the shoe. So if the zipper offers no performance benefit, what's the point of putting it on a soccer cleat? Well, I think the reason they did it is for the sake of bringing attention to the brand. Under Armour, since they first jumped into the soccer cleat market, I think they've done an excellent job at developing their own ideas and concepts and not copying anybody whatsoever. Like we do see from a lot of smaller brands who tend to just follow the trends, do whatever Nike and Adidas is doing, but changing things up a little bit. This is a truly unique design and Under Armour, I think, could never really be accused of copying anybody. But with Under Armour as well, they're also one of those brands that is kind of up and down in terms of the quality of their shoes. They've had some excellent shoes over the years. The Under Armour Blur Carbon 3 is legitimately one of my all time favorite shoes. Probably in my top 10, top 20, I'd have to think about that list a little bit more. The Clutch Fit series from Under Armour has been excellent. Even the original Under Armour Speed Form I thought was a really, really good shoe. But then they've had models that are not so great. All the Blur models before the Blur Carbon 3, the Under Armour Spotlight that replaced the Speed Form, not very good. And this is one of those shoes that while it does have some interesting redeeming qualities, the sole plate and stud pattern, most notably, you have features like a zipper. And honestly, the aesthetics of this shoe, I don't think are the greatest as well. So while they're getting attention for the sake of having a zipper on the shoe, the attention I think is more so along the lines of 
that shoe looks weird because it has a zipper. I'm not actually interested in buying it rather than, oh, that shoe has a zipper. I think that's pretty cool. I'm going to go buy the Under Armour Spotlight 2.0. I don't think that's the type of attention that this shoe is getting, which I assume is what Under Armour was aiming for. So I'm actually going to leave a little poll in the corner of the screen. It'll pop up. I want you guys to vote. Are you legitimately interested in the Under Armour Spotlight 2.0? Yes or no? Because again, I think that the zipper aspect, while it's bringing attention to this model, it's not the right kind of attention. Moving on, starting from the inside out, I guess, you can see underneath what is basically a lace cover, you have a neoprene sleeve, basically a one piece enclosure for your foot that free floats on the inside of the shoe. It gives it a nice kind of elasticated sensation when you slide your foot inside the boot, but that's about it. I don't think that this really adds anything to the structure all that much. The structure is coming from these basically rectangular pieces of synthetic material that are strapped to either side. They go right into the base of the sole. And then on the back side of these pieces, I'm sorry, it's difficult for me to show you guys this because there's not a large opening. You have nylon straps that are stitched all the way down and then they end in a loop, which is how the laces attach to both sides of this neoprene sleeve on the inside. You have a total of four different lacing positions going all the way down. And because you can open this up, you can kind of individually lace each section of the lacing system, although it still is a fairly shallow system that does allow you to get a decent amount of tightness. When you actually pull the laces tight, it feels relatively secure, but does it feel overly premium? Does this feel like a $220 shoe? In my opinion, not necessarily. Uh, this fastening system just looks a little bit too homemade in my opinion. It feels okay, but I can't say that it's anything revolutionary whatsoever. The parts that you see on the outside is the actual upper. This is the microfiber synthetic base that you have for the shoe that for Under Armour, this is some of the nicest synthetic material I've seen from the brand. It's got a nice softness to it. The inside has a nice lining to it as well. And it's just thin, it's flexible. It feels very, very good. Is the shape perfect? Not necessarily, but the touch you get on the ball in the four foot toe box area because it is uninterrupted, thin quality synthetic material is quite good. Moving on to the midfoot as well as across the top of the foot, you have the bulk of the zipper, you have the bulk of the lace cover, you have the synthetic pieces that are on the sides of the shoe, you have the fairly padded neoprene internal piece as well. So honestly, through the middle, it just feels much more clunky, much more bulky, and honestly, not that great considering that this is a $220 top end model. You also find that there is varying texturing on the surface. The green part has this kind of faux carbon fiber look to it. It's fairly smooth despite on how it looks, although I'm not crazy about the look. And then the black bits, as you guys can see, are kind of completely smooth, which I personally think looks a lot better. But when you have the two patterns side by side like this, with this kind of fairly harsh seam right here, I just think it looks like a concept shoe. It doesn't look like a finished product to me. The synthetic feels really, really good in the four foot toe box area where it's just synthetic, but the rest of the upper, especially through the midfoot, it just feels like there's way too much going on. Towards the heel, you can very clearly see that the shoe is a standard low cut, which is an interesting design choice because obviously they went for something very adventurous with the zipper. You think they would maybe try something with mid cuts as well, but we haven't seen that from Under Armour as of yet. I'm sure we will see that at some point though. You have an internal plastic heel counter, which feels nice and solid. And then as far as the heel liner is concerned, it's a smooth synthetic leather material, decent amount of padding, nothing too fancy at all, but it does feel quite good and fairly comfortable out of the box. The insole is fully removable, although they do put a little bit of glue, which is the residue that you can very clearly see on the bottom of this one. You can still pull it out pretty easily though. It is meant to come out after all. And the insole itself is fairly unexceptional by Under Armour standards, which I think has had some of the best insoles of any brand over the last few years. So it does actually have a standard mesh lining on top. Normally they're just straight up foam, which I actually really like about their insoles. And then the insole itself is more of a standard EVA foam. It's not a 4D foam like we've seen from Under Armour in the past, which actually provides really good underfoot cushioning. Granted, the thickness of the insole and the foam that they have here, while not 4D foam, actually does feel above average in terms of underfoot cushioning. But in comparison to what we've seen from Under Armour in the past with their insoles, I don't think these are quite as good. The sole plate and stud pattern is definitely the most interesting aspect of the Spotlight 2.0. You can see it features what looks like carbon fiber, but what is actually technically glass fiber. So kind of along the lines, of what we've seen from Nike in the past with the Mercurial Vapor 6, 7, 8, and 9. But up close, I'm kind of skeptical as to what kind of glass fiber this actually is, 
Because to me, that doesn't look like anything's actually woven. It almost just looks like a printed on pattern, but you can see that it does have some thickness from this angle right here, where it transitions into more of a standard plastic material. Whatever it is, and I am more partial to believe that it is actually some kind of glass fiber, because it is quite stiff, although you do have this raised stiffener bar, which I guess is a little bit difficult to see. It's kind of a spine that runs right through the middle. You can see it right there. That adds a lot of stiffness. So when you bend this shoe, there's basically no flex through the midfoot. Basically at the start of the forefoot right here is where the shoe has some flex. It doesn't feel overly stiff on feet though, which is kind of unusual because that was immediately something that I was a little bit worried about. The sole plate though, as a whole, feels quite good. You have these little kind of targeted zones right here where there's a cutout right there and a small cutout right here. I'm not sure what those are for. It's not really explained in the tech specs. It doesn't really feel particularly unusual either, but the sole plate as a whole feels quite good. So I am happy with that aspect. The stud pattern, this being the firm ground version, is also really interesting. You can see in the heel, you have four studs, two conical studs, and then two bladed studs closer towards the rear. And then in the forefoot, you have mostly conical studs, two at the tip, two at the base, one in the middle, and then you have two bladed studs kind of in between. So you only have six studs here, and they're positioned fairly far, uh, far forward. Normally they would be offset where you'd at least have one stud right here, but they chose not to incorporate that. So the emphasis here is definitely to be on your toes and just have a more aggressive running style in general, which is quite interesting. But again, because of the extra stiffness you have from this midfoot area, it doesn't feel like that part of the shoe is collapsing because there isn't any kind of stud there. So it's definitely an interesting design choice. And as far as the traction that it actually provides, it's very aggressive and quite good. Under Armour has always done a pretty good job with their more aggressive style stud patterns, and this one is no different. Really, really happy with the sole plate stud pattern design here. Just the rest of the shoe isn't up to par in my opinion. The last performance characteristic to talk about is the weight, which again, I don't know what Under Armour was doing here. In a size 9.5 US, these guys weigh in at 9.45 ounces, which for a top end model in 2017 is quite simply unacceptable. Given the sole plate and stud pattern design, I think it's safe to say that they're aiming this more towards a speed boot style of shoe. And if you're not at least under eight ounces to be in that category, you might as well not be there at all. And just in general, to be at nine and a half ounces for a top end shoe, in 2017 is just straight up unacceptable. Aside from a Copa Mundial, nothing weighs 9.5 ounces anymore. Pretty much every top end shoe you'll buy will be lighter. Not that these feel heavy on your feet, but in comparison to the competition, they are a fair bit heavier, which again, is unacceptable at this particular price point. Aesthetically, I really think that these look awful, and I know that's brutally honest, but I think that's the truth and I think a lot of people would agree with me. The sole plate looks really, really cool, but the upper, it looks homemade. It looks like someone tried to make a shoe and thought, hey, let's put a zipper on the side. That'll be cool. Let's slab some Under Armour logos here and here. This spotlight graphic that they incorporated just looks really, really bad in my opinion. And then the launch color, this green, is not very good. I don't care for the faux carbon fiber finish on any shoe. And then when you combine that with the matte black they have on the rest of the upper, it just looks really, really strange. Under Armour, again, does not have a great track record in terms of people really liking the look of their shoes. And this certainly does not help them. But let me know your opinions down below in the comment section. Do you think this is a good looking shoe? I definitely don't. All right, so let's put these on and talk about how they fit and feel on feet. Putting them on though, that's kind of an interesting process because of the zipper. So assuming that you've re-zipped them prior to your previous use, you're gonna have to unzip your shoes. So because you're unzipping them, you now have access to the lacing system, which I've already pre-loosened the laces. Now on top of the laces, you have the one piece neoprene sleeve that I showed you. So getting them on is not as easy as the standard low cut, as a standard low cut shoe would be. But once you have it on, basically this neoprene sleeve kind of wraps your midfoot, has that nice snug feel to it. Then you basically just have to pull on the end, kind of adjust it so it's completely smooth and it feels pretty good on your feet. From there, you wanna pull the laces tight, which because the lace cover um, is open because of the zipper, you have access to the entire lacing system, which is nice. You're gonna tie the laces tight. And then from there, technically the shoe is fully secure on your foot. You don't have to zip them up in order to have the proper responsiveness and feel from the shoe. But then you have this large zipper piece at the bottom, which you obviously don't want. That's gonna get in the way. You're gonna feel that for sure. That could actually probably cause an injury if you kick the ball hard enough, given that it was on the right spot of your foot. But anyways, you wanna take the laces, you kinda of tuck them to the side so it is out of the way. 
close that up and then kind of bring these two sides together. Ideally kind of pull them together as close as you can so you're putting less strain on the zipper, which again, long term and depending on the width of your foot, that could be a little bit of an issue. So you can see that when I zip it up, basically up to basically the halfway mark, I would say, it zips pretty easily. But once I get to this point, my foot's a little bit wider right here, so it doesn't necessarily want to come together quite as easily. So you can still pull the zipper, but there's a lot of stress on both sides to make it come together, which long term that would definitely concern me, even when just running around quick changes of direction, cover that piece back up, and that's pretty much it. You've got the shoe on, that's all the zipper does. It just closes back up the lace cover. On feet, the Spotlight 2.0 actually feels pretty comfortable. The microfiber synthetic feels very soft, in the four foot toe box area where you just have that microfiber material. That's probably the best feeling part of the upper. The midfoot with that neoprene sock enclosure feels okay. The lacing system provides a decent amount of security in terms of fastening the midfoot. But as you guys can see, and partially what you can feel is that there's just a lot of layers of material. There's a lot of bulk through the midfoot, which you're gonna be using a lot to make contact with the ball, striking, juggling, controlling the ball. I just feel like there's too much going on and it doesn't necessarily feel like a top end shoe. It just feels like a cluttered design, if you know what I mean. The low cut aspect, the heel lockdown is very good. It's comfortable, pretty straightforward in all honesty. And as far as the sole plate is concerned, it's definitely very evident that there's a lot of stiffness through the midfoot. Um, but because the forefoot is so flexible, it still feels pretty good. No major complaints for me in regards to the sole plate. To me, the big thing here is that they just feel too bulky through the midfoot. And that's not because of the material, it's because of there being too much material, too many layers. You have the top layer, the zipper, the neoprene, the laces, the synthetic pieces over top of the neoprene, there's just way too much going on. As far as fit is concerned, I wouldn't say that they are overly narrow or overly wide, fairly average in terms of overall width. But again, because of that zipper, if you had really wide feet, I think they would fit you, but you'd have a really, really hard time getting that zipper closed again, which would be an issue because I definitely would not wear them with the zipper unzipped which sounds ridiculous to say, but that is something that needs to be addressed here. And as far as sizing is concerned, they run about a half size small, like this previous Spotlight did, like a lot of Under Armour shoes do in general. So instead of wearing my usual size 9 US here, I bumped it up to a 9.5, and the fit and the length is exactly as expected. So if you are looking to order a pair of these for yourself, I would recommend going a half size up in order to achieve the best possible fit. To sum up the Spotlight 2.0, it's definitely disappointing and I really feel like Under Armour was reaching with this one. The incorporation of a zipper, I think is just a very, very questionable design choice that is not going to pay off for them long-term. I hope this is something that they ditch entirely and hopefully in the next model, they won't have any zippers and we won't see zippers from anybody else either. The design itself does not look like something that came out of a gigantic sportswear company. The incorporation of the neoprene sleeve is a cool idea, but everything else around it just feels homemade. It doesn't look the part. I think the sole plate and stud pattern is the one redeeming quality on this particular shoe. Plus they are relatively comfortable on your feet, but the touch with all the bulkiness and kind of mishmash of materials and layers through the midfoot with the zipper, the weight of the shoe, it's just not an attractive product. I'm not sure who this appeals to, and that is a major concern for a brand like Under Armour. I hope this shoe has a short life, because in my honest opinion, I think this is probably the worst top end release of 2017. Anyways guys, that is it for my review of this particular shoe. If for any reason that you do wanna buy these, again, you can click the first link down below in the description. That'll take you to the review page on my website where you'll find buy it now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes. We'll be able to pick these up below their normal $220 retail price. If you have any questions regarding this particular shoe, feel free to leave them down below in the comments and I definitely will get an answer out to you. If you enjoyed today's video, found it helpful and informative, be sure to support it with a like. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all of my social media information linked down below in the description as well. And other than that, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. As always, thanks for watching.